said, He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. I know, I know, I know that my Redeemer liveth and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God, whom I shall see for myself, and mine eyes shall behold not enough. Even to your old age, I shall be the same. And even to your graying years, I shall bear you. I have done it, and I shall carry you. And I shall bear you, and I shall deliver you. For I am ready, already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the course. I have kept the faith. In the future, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me in that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have loved his appearing Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I, I will give you rest. Oh, for I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. Oh, I fought, I fought, I fought a good fight. I finished my course, and I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not only to me, but unto all of them also that love his appearing. To God be the glory. Give me my Bible out my bag. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. To God be the glory. Mercy, mercy, mercy. Amen. Amen. And thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Even in the hour of bereavement, we still thank God for his mighty works. We thank God because he has blessed us all. And we say thank you. Thank you. My, my, my. 
Jesus. My Lord and my God. To the family and friends, we have gathered here this afternoon to praise God and to witness to our faith as we thank God for the life of Brother Griffin Hall. We come together in grief, yet we are acknowledging our human loss. And we ask God to search. Please, Lord, search our hearts. And while in pain, may we find comfort in sorrow. May we find peace in Christ. And in death, may we find the final, the resurrection of our Lord and Savior. We will conduct the services in the order that have been outlined for us this afternoon by the family. And we will continue to pray as we go through this hour. Thank you. And the service is outlined in the bulletin. We give honor to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to God the Father, and to the Holy Spirit, to the ministers that grace the roster with me, to the eulogists for today, and to the family. We know that you feel sorrow in your heart at this time, but don't let it get you down, because we know that this is not the end but this is just the beginning. I shall read into your hearing from the Old Testament 23rd Psalm. And it reads as thus. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still water. He restores my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. At this time, I shall read into your hearing from the New Testament. From Matthew, chapter number 2, 
verses 28 through 30. shall read until you're hearing from Matthew chapter number 11 28 through 30 and it reads as thus come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest take my yoke upon me and learn of me for I am meek and lowly in heart and ye shall find rest unto your soul. For my yoke is easy, and my burdens are light. God's word for God's people, let us be obedient hearers, but not just hearers, but doers of the word of God. Oh, Lord God, we come to you at this hour of bereavement and hurt. But Lord, we come because we know even in the presence of death, Lord, we can still call upon your holy and righteous name. Oh, Jesus, have mercy on us this afternoon. Have mercy upon this family, Lord God. Oh, Lord, we ask, Father God, that you would just bind up their broken hearts. Lord God, please wipe away their tears, Lord. And please fill the void, Lord, that will be left behind. Oh, Lord, we just come. Lord, you are the giver of life. And your son, Jesus the Christ, is the source of eternal life. So, Father God, hear our cry this afternoon. Oh, please, Jesus, hear our cry. Because you know our hearts, Lord. And, Father, you see our grief. Only you, Lord can give us peace and comfort and you can dry away our tears only you Lord can soothe our pain and hurt so now Lord we pray that you be able to carry and we know that you are able to carry each member of this family Lord through the dark hours Lord and the days ahead to come. And Lord, just wrap them in your loving, loving arms of protection and let them know that you are right there and that you promised that you would never leave them. And please, Father, continue to be with each and every one of us. And especially as we go through this pandemic that we are going through. So bless. Oh, Jesus, bless. Bless in your name, Lord. And Lord, please, Jesus, please, Jesus, reach down from heaven and touch our souls, Lord. Uh, oh, Lord, God, please, Jesus. Uh, please, Father, have your way in our life, Lord. Uh, oh, Father God, this is not the end. Because, Father God, there is life after death. And, Lord, we pray that you will give us a home, a home, a home in your kingdom, way beyond the skies, Lord, where we will cease from troubles and our sorrows will be over. 
because we will be home at last. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, we ask this in Jesus' name. And we will always give you the honor, glory, and the praises that you deserve, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for sending your son, Jesus the Christ, that died for us. That we will have a right to the tree of life. We just say thank you right now, Lord. And we pray that you will just keep us in your loving care. In Jesus' name, amen. Whom those I love and those who love me. When I'm gone, release me and let me go. I have so many things to see and do. You mustn't tie yourself to me with too many tears. Be thankful. We had so many good years. I gave you my love and you can only guess how much you've given me in happiness. I thank you for the love that you have shown, but now it's time I travel on alone. So grief for me a while, if grief you must, then let your grief be comforted by trust. It is only for a while that we must part will treasure the memory within your heart. I won't be far away, for life goes on. And if you need me, call and I will come. Though you can't see or touch me, I will be near. And if you listen with your heart, you will hear. All my love around you, soft and clear. And then, when you come this way alone, I greet you with a smile and a welcome home. We're scheduled to have remarks at this time. Um, I don't see Sister Geraldine Robinson. Is Sister Joyce Robinson Nash here? Thank you. about my uncle Griffin I talk about a man that shows strength when I looked up the word in the name Griffin Griffin symbolized strength and intelligence while growing up in Eastover he was like the uncle that walks in silence but we made sure that we had what we need. And sometimes when I sit back and I look back on the word intelligence, you know, we go back to book smart and what we learn in school. But intelligence can go different type of ways. When we was growing up, we always would be in the field. And you wonder, how did Birth and Buddha always have a garden every year? And you have to go back and look at intelligence. You have to know when to plant the seed, when to fertilize the seed. 
and went to water the sea. So you, you tie all those things in together and that shows you intelligence. Griffin was a man that made sure that everybody was happy, you know. I remember one time they called us from Young Grocery Store and told us, well, Buddha down here at the grocery store, y'all might want to come get him. <laughs> we get down there, and he was chugging down those two liter sodas so fast, he said, oh, Bertha going to come, and she's going to tell me I can't have these sodas. <laughs> oh, we just, th I think about the times when we would go to the grocery store, and Bertha and, and Grandma would say, y'all get the grocery out the car. And Buddha would say, okay, all right, all right, all right. And he'll go and get the grocery out the car. But not knowing Buddha is focusing on that loaf of bread and that sweet milk. <laughs> so about time they would get in the house and Bertha would say, well, where the bread at? And Buddha come from the back and bring back two slices of bread that's left in the loaf. Bertha said, Buddha, I tell you not to eat all that bread. But Buddha did not care. I had, I laughed so much for Moses about, this also go back when you're talking about intelligence. Cause you know, I always eat fried chicken. And I eat the fried chicken, but I still have meat left on the bone. And then you give fried chicken to Griffin, Griffin bring back the bone, it be clean to the teeth. I'm talking about nothing on there down to the gristle. Everything be gone. And he'll say, yeah, I love me some chicken. And they, they raise up on stew chicken. I think I told my sister, I said, that might be why I don't care for stew chicken. Because I said, well, we was eating stew chicken every time they go to the grocery store. But those are the times that we laugh and we share. And when he went to the nursing home, this also go back to intelligence. You know, in the nursing home, they used to take their time washing Griffin clothes. Well, Griffin was brought up in the old days, so they're used to washing their clothes by hand and hanging it on the clothesline. I went in there one Saturday to check on them. I walk in, clothes stretch everywhere. I said, Buddha, what you doing? They take it too long to wash my clothes. I got to wash my own clothes and hang them up on the thing. I said, well, Buddha, you can't put your clothes over here in the other people's side. He had the, the chest of drawers open, the clothes hanging all out. <laughs> and the worker said, he don't give you time to do nothing. <laughs> but that's just Buddha. Buddha was just a man that made sure he was self-sufficient. He told me one time I came in there and brought him some underwear, and I bought him the V-cut underwear. He took him out the pack. He said, Monty? Oh, no, Monty, you got to take them back to the store. <laughs> I need the leg in the, in the underwear, Monty. <laughs> so I say, Buddha, okay, okay, I'll make sure I get the leg in the underwear the next time. You got to take them back. I can't keep them, Monty. <laughs> but those are the times I remember with my uncle. I remember him coming to get us from Crystal and Nisha house. And Grandma would sit him down the road and say, go get Trina and, and, and Jordan and tell him to come on back to the house. And he'll just come down there so gentle. Dama said, come on back home, y'all. Come on back. Get on them bikes and come on back. <laughs> and me and Trina would be riding one way. We look back, where, where Buddha at? But Buddha had these trails cut all through the, the neighborhood. And by the time we get home, he there in the backyard. You're like, how he beat us home? We on bikes. But that was just Griffin. And, you know, I, I have so much stories to tell, but I just want y'all to remember him as a man of integrity, a man of smart and, and his meekness. You know, he wasn't a man by rushing, ready to go all the time. He took his time when he wants something done. And that's how I want to remember my uncle. By the loving times that we shared together, how we loved on one another, and how he teaches us different type of things of how to be self-sufficient growing up. And that's one of the things I think I take as an adult from him is being self-sufficient, getting your own, making a way, fighting for what you believe in. And that is what I love about my Uncle Buddha. 
I thank you, God, for all your hospitality, my Israel home, to the Hall family, and I thank you so much. Thank you. My daughter take on my words, y'all. I don't know what to say. Now that everything her done say, I want to say. So, only thing I can say on this on the half what she done say that Buddha was a hard working man. I watched him 24 7. He was getting that fear of him in birth, and he was shocked and shocked. And when to the whole come back, it ain't had no end on it. The thing was empty, it wasn't a hole no more. And they'll go back in the next morning and start doing the same old thing. So watching him, like I just said, they get out and they work. They didn't never ask nobody for nothing. Anything they want, they would raise it and they, and they share the peas and everything you want. They it, it was there. Griffin get out early in the morning, walk to the store and walk back. And uh, the wheel looked for him. Griffin down in the store. Like the husband said, said him, don't bring nothing back. He'll bring, he'll be here, eat it up before he get back to the house. <laughs> so her boy was telling the truth. So I was right there watching him. So. I can't say too much more with her than say, but I'm gonna sing a little bit of this song, and I ain't singing like it. The song says, "I go, cause I have to go by myself." Mm, so I'm gonna sing this one. I go, cause I have to go by my, have to go by myself. I say I go. Yes, I have to go by my, have to go by my, say, if my mother don't go, if my father don't go, or my sister, or my brother, I say I go, yes, I have to go by my, go by my, say. I say I pray, as I have to pray by my, have to pray by myself. I say I pray, as I have to pray by my, have to pray by myself. If my mother don't pray, and my father or my sister or my brother. I say I pray, as I have to pray by my, have to pray by myself. I say, send me, send me, I go, send me, I go, Lord. Sometimes it gets hard, but I go, Lord. This time I get pray sometime. I, I go long and I go as I have to go by my have to go by my day. I know Buddha fight a good fight. But his time has come that he has missed gold. But you see, on, Buddha, we love you, but God loves you best. I'd just like to first thank everybody. Thank you all for asking me to come for us. Um, and uh, precious Lord, <coughs> pray. 
precious Lord. Take my hand, lead me on. Let me church we're just traveling we're just pilgrims down here and we're traveling and we're all trying to make it to our earthly home to the family to my brothers Reverend Fitz Fitzgerald Reverend Fitzgerald and to Chaplain Black, you have to forgive me. It takes a little while, and, and I get used to the names. But I want y'all to know that I'm not a stranger to the family because Brother Griffin Hall lived right around the road from where I live. So, and I often saw Brother Hall walking. And sometimes he would speak, and sometimes he would just keep his head bowed. But it was all right. My husband knew him and went to school with him and everything. I did not prepare a long, drawn-out message for you this afternoon. But I did prepare what God gave me Amen. to prepare. And if I could invite your attention for a short while, and I pray I'm going to be able to do this with this mask um, because it fogs my glasses. 
question um, to the book of Ecclesiastes. That's Ecclesiastes, the third chapter, verses 1 and 2 and verse 11. And I will be reading from the King James edition. It says like this, to everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die. And verse 11 says, he has made everything beautiful in its time. Also, he has put eternity in their hearts, except that no one can find out the work that God does from beginning to end. Let us pray. Most holy and gracious Father, it is your servant that stands here this afternoon. Lord God, I pray that you would just uh, speak through me and speak to the family, loved ones, and friends that are here with us. Lord, speak and speak so we can hear and understand what you are saying to us. So, y'all, Lord, just use me to your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. In his time, in his time. The book of Ecclesiastes says, everything on earth has its own time and its own season. There's a time to be born. And God allowed Brother Griffin Hall to be born on November the 3rd, 1935. And then there is a time of death. Therefore, on February the 3rd, 2021, the death angel was summoned to go down and take my son, Brother Griffin Hall, I want you to bring him on home. His life down here is finished. He's fought a good fight, but he has now finished his course. So, uh, church, God makes everything happen at the right time and in the right season. Yet none of us can ever fully understand all God is doing or have done. We cannot always understand why things happen. Why do bad things happen to good people? Why do good people suffer and, and die long before the evil ones? We don't have the answer to those questions. Uh, we don't even have the answer to why coronavirus is running wild throughout the land. Uh, oh, people are out of work. Uh, oh, my God, and people are dying left and right. Uh, we may wonder why, but God knows why. Uh, oh, but God knows the answer to all the questions. Uh, and God's timing uh, oh, is always the right time uh, because he is God uh, all by himself. Uh, and he never makes a mistake. Uh, and he's always on time. Uh, we might be wondering, uh, but God is an on-time God. Uh, always have the answer 
to every question. Uh, always have a solution uh, to every problem. Uh, all we've got to do is to trust him, uh, lean on him, uh, and call him by his name. Uh, you see, uh, uh, my brothers and sisters, uh, it's easy to get uh, discouraged when our lives get turned upside down uh, because the death angel came a-calling. Oh, but let me remind you this afternoon, we shouldn't lose heart because God is at work in our lives. Even in the midst of death, in the midst of pain, in the midst of suffering. Remember, we serve an awesome God. Oh, a God of grace and a God of mercy. He is a God that will never leave us or forsake us. That is the great news about God, that he is there. He will guide us, and he will lead us, and he will comfort us. He will heal us when we are sick, that even in the midst of sorrow, he is right here with you this afternoon. He will bind up your broken heart. He will wipe away all your tears. Oh, he will give you strength that you never thought you had. My God is able to do all things. Isn't that great to hear that in the loneliest of times, and especially in a time such as now, where grief can make us feel as though we are the only person on earth. But here is a friendly reminder this afternoon. God is in the midst of us. God will never leave us. God will never forsake us. Oh my, he watches over us. He's constantly on God, trying to bring us closer and closer and closer to him. When Jesus walked the earth, he conquered death by dying on the cross. And then he offered us a way to meet him and his father in heaven by giving your life to Christ. Don't put off the day or oh, what you need to do. We can't put it off till tomorrow. We've got to run the race, church. If you want to meet your loved one, run the race. Run it with faith. Run it for Jesus. The Bible tells us that old death have been swallowed up in victory. We are further told. My, 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 my. That death has lost its sting. Don't worry about dying. Because if you die in Christ, you will live again. And in that great getting up morning, when the trumpets sound, you shall rise up and meet Jesus. Won't that be grand, church? We will be able to walk around the holy city, sit at Jesus' feet. Oh, my Lord, what a glorious, what a hallelujah time. Oh, Lord, don't you want to see Jesus? Don't you want to meet the man from Galilee? Don't you want to sit at his feet? Don't you want to see Jesus? My, my, my. My, my. Drop your tears this afternoon. Put a smile on your face. Because one day you're going to meet Brother Griffin. Oh, and it will be a holly, holly, hallelujah time. Oh, Lord, won't that be grand? I leave you with this this afternoon. We are told, and it's already.
anybody been raped this afternoon? Although we walk through the valleys and the shadow of death, we need not to fear, for our God is right there with us. So fear not, my brothers and my sisters, because God is with us. And be not dismayed, we need not fear, for our God is closer than we think. So fear not, my brothers and my sisters. He is our God. And he will strengthen us. And as you go through these days, remember, just call on Jesus. Because Jesus is the answer. And he's the way, the truth, and the light. And he will help. Strengthen your heart because it's all in God's time. Not our time, church, but in God's time. There is a season and a reason for everything, but it's all in God's timing. I say to the family, although it may be hard, but... God is right here with you. And God will be with you in the days to come. And God will lift the sadness from you and fill you with a constant hope and joy that one day you will meet your loved ones, not just one of them, but all of them in the great by and by. To God be the glory. Thank you. 